Now I'm going to introduce you to the third schema that we'll talk about today, and that is a change problem. And in a change problem, we have one amount, and that amount increases. That is a fancy word for getting bigger. Or that amount decreases. That's a fancy word for getting smaller. So it's one thing that increases or decreases. So an example of a change amount, a change problem, is Shanna had four dollars. Can you imagine yourself having four dollars? Yeah. Then you got three dollars for cleaning your room. So you had this amount of money, and your amount of money increases, and now you have a new in amount of money. So this is a change problem because there's one amount that increases. And here are some other examples of change problems. Shanna had $4, then she earned some money for cleaning her room, now she has $7. But in all of these problems, there's one amount of money that is increasing. Now the next type of change, or, or, I'll come to this in just a minute. Uh, I guess so. Sorry, you guys. All right. We also have change problems that have a decrease. And this is also one amount of, thing, uh, of anything. It could be money, it could be brownies, it could be tires or anything. And then that is decreasing. So here's an example. Michaela has $9. Then she spent $2. How much money does Michaela have now? So this is not a total problem. There are not two parts that we're putting together for a total. It is not a difference problem. There are not two amounts that we're comparing for a difference. Instead, this is a change problem where we have one amount that increases or one amount that decreases. So let's look at our graphic organizer here and let's fill in some of this information. So in a change problem, there is a start amount that increases. And what's another way to say increases? You could also say gets bigger. And in a change decrease, there's a start amount that decreases. And what's another way that we could say decreases? If something decreases, it gets smaller. Okay? So we have one amount that increases or one amount that decreases. Now my equations that I use for change problems is I have a start, so I write ST. And for an increase, I'm going to use a plus sign to show the increase. And I'm going to increase a C, which is the change. And that equals a new end amount. So I'll use E for end amount. So the start plus the change equals the end amount. Now help me out here. Let's think of a change equation for a change decrease. Start, if it's a decrease, should I use a plus sign or a minus sign? Plus sign or minus sign? Yes? Minus? Minus, yeah, because our amount is getting smaller. Very good. So minus C equals B. E. So my start plus a change, that indicates an increase. Start minus the change equals a decrease. And then I can use a graphic organizer here. This one looks a little different. Circle, arrow, circle, arrow, circle. And it's the start, the change, and the end amount. And I could use the same graphic organizer for the change decrease. So we're just a little short on time, so let's go ahead and skip to a change problem. If you haven't finished filling that in, that's okay. I would like you to pancake flip your paper over. And we're going to look here at problem D. All right, so I see a word problem. What's my strategy that I should use anytime I see a word problem? Yes, sir. UPS check. check. All right, so let's go ahead and write that to the side to help me remember how to work through this word problem. And the U stands for understand. How can I understand a word problem? Yes, ma'am. By reading it. Let's go ahead and read this problem all together, all right? In the morning, it rained two inches. Then in the afternoon, it rained some more. 
Over the whole day, it rained five inches. How many inches did it rain in the afternoon? So we read it, and now we're going to put it into our own words. What do we have to figure out in this problem? What do we have to figure out? Yes. If it increases or decreases. We're going to figure out if it's increase or decrease. We're actually going to figure out the change in the rain. All right? So that's what we're figuring out here. So I'm going to check this off. We've worked on the understand part. Now we're going to make a plan. This is where we have to figure out what schema or what type of problem is this. So I have three questions for you. Is this a total problem where we have two parts put together for a total? Is this a difference problem where there are two amounts compared for a difference? Or is this a change problem where there's one amount that increases or one amount that decreases? Yes, it is a change problem. Why is it a change problem? Yes, sir. Can we help you out a little bit? Okay, so in the morning, we had some rain, and then what happened? We got some rain. What happened? Did it rain more? So what happens to our amount of rain? Is it changing? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have our rain, and it is changing. So this is a change problem. I'm going to go ahead and draw my change picture to help me organize this word problem information. Circle, arrow, circle, arrow, circle. And I'll go ahead and label my circles just to help remember what goes in each box. All right, we've done our planning. We know this is a change problem. Now we're going to put in our numbers and we're going to solve. In the morning, it rained two inches. So let's see, that two, do you think that's a number that we're going to need here? Yes. Yes, I see some head shakes. Yes. Two is telling me about what amount. Is it the start amount of rain, the change, or the end amount? Yes, ma'am. The start. It is the start amount. So let's go ahead and check off two and write it two in the start box. Now, the story continues. Then in the afternoon, it rained some more. Do we know how much it rained? No. No. So, but that's a change in the rain. So how should I mark that change circle? If I don't know it, well, how can I mark it? Question mark. I don't know the change in the rain. That's what we're going to figure out. Then oh, after the whole day, it rained five inches. So how much did it rain by the end of the day? Five. So we're going to check off five and put that in the E box. So now I can just go ahead and solve. And oh, I have to, let's see, I forgot one thing. If it's a starting amount and it's a change in the amount of rain, if it rained more, am I going to use a plus sign or a minus sign? Yes. Plus sign. Plus. So I'm going to go ahead and put a plus right there to help me remember that. So two plus question mark equals five. Okay, I need some help here. What can I add to 2 to make 5? What can I add to 2 to make 5? Everyone? 3. three. three. So my question mark is 3. And I can't leave 3 by itself. What would be a good label for 3? Three? 3 rain? Inches. No, I heard it. 3 inches. inches. Very nice. All right, so we solved the problem, and now I'm going to check it. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Is that correct? Yeah. Our answer is reasonable. And what should I do here? I'm just going to draw a circle around that so my teacher can find it. So how much did it rain in the afternoon? Let's go back and see if that makes sense. It rained 2 inches in the morning, and then you just told me it rained 3 more inches in the afternoon. So does it make sense that it rained 5 inches across the whole day? Yeah. All right. We solved our first change problem. And for today, our last change problem. So we are going to finish up today. I want to thank you all for coming and working on these math word problems with me. And think about how much you've learned. You learned, first of all, a word problem strategy of UPS check. And I know you're going to use that with your teachers from now on. But then you also learn about these different schema. And I want you to help me review. What is a total problem? Tell, tell me. Total problem is, everyone? 
parts put together for a total. What is a difference problem? Amount compared for a difference. difference. And then how how is a change problem? What's that? We have one amount, and what happens to it? Increase. Increases, or what else can also happen to it? Decrease. Decrease. All right, so we've learned those three schema, and I hope that you can apply them back in your classroom. So if you could